Okay, I thought my camera shut off because the screen wasn't coming back on. Anyway, look at the size of that asparagus. I'm standing next to it and it is up to my nose. Look at that. Look at that. That wasn't there last week at all. It was compacted class five gravel. Look at, and then we got the purple stuff. We got the purple asparagus coming in. And look at, wait till you see some of these. Look at that, it's two feet high. That's a 24 inch asparagus right there. There's another one. In a week, that one's gonna be the same size, less than a week. Another one. Wait till you see the thick ones down here. Look at the size of these asparagus. You could club someone with that thing. That's humongous. That's going home with me because these will be replaced in a couple of days. Look at that little patch there. And when we leveled this out, dang, I tripped over the rope or the string. And look at, look at that patch right there. All this asparagus, purple stuff too, just popping up everywhere here. Look at them big thick ones. Look at that. Just huge. And there's more. It's all the way down to there. So basically what I will end up doing here is I'm going to bring soil back in. Because this is going to be the outside. If you can see this orange string here. Going all the way down. That's going to be my fence line. Around the outside of my raised garden bed area here. And then... So you still have access to the trees and everything and you know, so everything will be right along that fence and we'll be able to keep all the deer out because there's, I mean, if you look at this property, how are you going to stop deer? The only way you can do that is to keep them out with the fence because you're in in the middle of nowhere here where the deer own this place you know what i mean so they eat whatever they want and this place has so much good food on it because there's so many different there's apples plums pears uh apricots uh, nectarines pears uh maybe i said that already peaches uh, here's a hazelnut tree Another hazelnut. I planted five of those last fall and I'm gonna have to mulch them again. But look at the size of this horseradish. That was not here a week and a half ago. So I'm gonna come in here, cut this grass down as far as I can, and consolidate this another horseradish over there and then if you look further down there there's a nice huge one down there so i'm gonna dig those up and bring them here and plant them with these and this whole square i'd have to say it's gonna be about 40 feet by 15 feet wide and it will be it's a perennial horseradish garden now and what do we have here I don't know what that is, but, uh, and there's my grape trellis I built last fall, two 150-foot grape trellises, and there's one, two, three, I think there's, uh, 35 or 36 total grapes, grape vines along these trellises and then in the middle is all plum trees and if you look at all these plum trees you're gonna have to go through and mulch all these trees again and but look at all the baby plum trees in there all this one doesn't have any but this one has a lot of them growing around the base too i think i saw this one but a lot of these have Plum trees growing, little little pups growing out the side. So we're gonna make more plum trees out of those. 
And same with the some of the apple trees. They got some little pups growing too. Um, all right, that's the end of the grape trellis here. And the last plum tree. Let's see if there's any plums on here yet. Uh, I don't see anything. I'm not. Oh yeah, there's one right there. I don't know if you can see that. So the plums are plumbing. If that's a word. And if it's not, guess what? It is now. And it's mine. But uh, let's see this tree. I don't see any on this one yet. But, you know, come back a week from now, these plum trees are going to be full. Imagine having five acres this whole property is 15 but the the part i am dealing with is five it's it's basically what i'm i put in the ground is an organic farm uh produce fruit and vegetable farm these are uh verbenum this and that's going to make a nice hedge uh, those elderberries I put in the ground, they don't, they're coming along really slow. I noticed that about them, they don't grow too fast, especially the bare root ones. And here's another plum tree, and look at all the babies around there. We're going to dig them up and move them, or put them in pots, and make more trees out of them. And uh, another thing that came up through this class five is rhubarb you can see the rhubarb coming up right there right there and i think there's some back there too so we're going to clean up these areas here that we messed up when we were leveling this we're going to rake it all out and we're going to bring in some soil around here and then we're going to mulch the entire area around these uh this raised beds garden and if you notice there's a trench along the outside too along and if you know this corner here slopes down and but yeah there's a trench that funnels all the water to a swale or a, i don't know it just drains right down into the field over there so we got a slope so I have to move all this soil away from there and yeah, I don't know if you could see through the trees how everything slopes down and goes right down to the corner about five feet from where the grape trellis starts and then goes into a swale along the outside of those, this field and I believe this field is alfalfa and then there's five acres on the other side. And then all these, uh, this wooded area. And back in this wooded area is, there's some mushroom towers back there. And I am going to be getting some plugs and I'm going to plug all of the mushroom, all the logs back there. There's, I don't know, I, I there's probably a hundred, hundred holes that I would have to fill back there, but there'll be mushrooms all over the place. And there's some, there's uh, trees and fruit and stuff growing back in these, this wooded area. Like I said, this used to be an organic farm back in the day, which this property had the uh, organic designation because this guy who owned this property had signs up that says no chemical spraying allowed so this whole property has been free of herbicides and pesticides so I mean look at how green everything is here and these trees are uh, it's amazing but uh, that's enough of me talking I got to get back to work I got to roll out this landscape fabric and then start putting the raised beds in. And uh, 
yeah this is gonna be a beautiful sight to see and then we're gonna have a four foot fence all the way around the edge with some double doors right here to get for access and we'll have some pathways in here that will allow you to drive a four-wheeler in here with a little trailer on it so you can harvest or if you have to bring soil in here you have to bring mulch whatever you want to do so there's going to be it's going to be very we got a lot of room to work with so i got uh, 40 feet wide by 90 feet, 95 feet long okay the entire area is 110 long by 60 feet wide so i decided to put the fence inside all the, the tree line and it just makes it easier to work with and then we're going to going to make those areas asparagus beds which is very simple just throw some soil in there some mulch and that stuff's going to take care of itself um, anyway time for me to get back to work and i will have some more images and video for you later on today have an amazing day my friends grow food not laws see ya